The Coindesk Spotlight is brought to you by Nexo, the place to earn on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more. Our final guest knows a thing or two about building during bear markets. Pascal Gauthier got into Bitcoin in 2014 after the fall of Silk Road and now bankrupt crypto exchange Mt. Gox, when Bitcoin fell about 85% from all-time highs. That's when he founded crypto data firm Kaiko and started working with the folks at crypto wallet provider Ledger. Now Pascal is CEO of Ledger, where they are expanding during another bear market into Web3. Have a listen. So at Ledger, we never really think in terms of bull and bear markets. And actually, we always prefer bear markets because this is when you can actually build versus bull markets where everybody's focused on the top line and the wrong things. You know, To always focus on just making maximum money makes you lose sight of what's really important. Releasing new products, new features in bear markets, I think this is where it resonates the Tell most. Tell me about your products. Yeah. And so typically... What's happening right now, you know, the reason why we're in a bear market is because people got hacked a lot. The announcements today are just like to enhance security and ease of use, which is our mission for something that is really critical with NFTs, which is first drop marketplace. Today, when you do a first drop in uh, your first NFT drop, it's on Discord, it's on Twitter, it's vastly unsafe. And so we are announcing the first safe you know, first drop NFT marketplace in the world period. It doesn't exist, only on Ledger. Clear signing, multi-chain, you know, all this good stuff. It's only on Ledger that you can drop your NFTs securely. And the second announcement was that in order to access that marketplace, you can buy a mint pass and the website is open and you can go there now. You know what's interesting to me about that? Because I think of you as a Bitcoin OG, you know, and Ledger is where you put your Bitcoin, but now you're expanding and specifically into NFTs and Web3. Tell me about that pivot. So guess what, it was never a pivot. Our mission has always been to secure and make easy to use all crypto assets. We call them uh, critical digital assets. We drafted that mission in 2017. We knew that Bitcoin was there, Ethereum, but we also knew that we were going to see the tokenization of the world. And we didn't really know there was going to be NFT, but, but equally we knew that it was not just going to be Bitcoin, but many other things. And so the mentality of Ledger has always been to secure everything crypto, not just Bitcoin, not just Ethereum. It has never been also about pure financial products. It has always been about security first. We are a security company. We are the only security company in the space. But when you think about Web3 in general, and so Web3 is a new term, but everything is sort of Web3. When you think about Web3, Security is paramount, and so redesigning uh, hardware with security first is our priority, it's our job, and only Ledger is doing it in the market, and people find it more and more relevant as we go, which is why it's so exciting for us. What do you, where do you see the future between you know, those folks who are all Bitcoin all the time and those who are developing this Web3 garden of different product protocols? Sure, I mean, Bitcoin is Web3 and, you know, Web3 Metaverse is the web of ownership and transfer of value. There is a competition among technologies and so some will disappear, some will thrive, etc. And we will see in the end who wins. But what seems to be uh, extra important right now and relevant, especially when you look at NFT, it's all about communities. Bitcoin is one community, Ethereum is another one, and each NFT community is its own community. And the tech stack is sort of the same, but what Ledger needs to do and what companies like Ledger needs to do is to make that disappear for the user. We focus too much on technology, we should focus more on product. And so what we announced today are products. The underlying technology, we got you. This is what Ledger does, but users shouldn't focus on this. And companies should focus on building products. If you think about Apple, you don't, when you use your iPhone, you're not thinking I'm using the web. The, your phone is an extension of the palm of your hand and it connects you very easily to the web, but you're not thinking that you connect to the web. If you remember your experience connecting to the web in 95 and you compare it to today, you know, technology has completely disappeared and now you're using a product. So what we're trying to do at Ledger is this, make this technology disappear and build products. All right, when you hear about Coinbase telling or filing uh, with a, C, a, a notice that you know, if you hold crypto on their platforms as a depositor, you may be on the bottom of the list to get it back. Does that, does that get you riled up or, you know, what, what do you want to say to those people? 
Well, I say this is life. I mean, you know, uh, with your bank, uh, if your bank goes bankrupt, probably they're not going to return the funds. Uh, what Coinbase said was actually, uh, you know, it was that all along. It is, it is not new. It's just like people don't pay attention. I think, you know, the, the reason why Ledger Open, we put so much emphasis on education, education about Web3, but education about finance, etc. You have to know what's what. You have to know that when you trust a third party with value, they might not return it to you for many reasons. And so ownership of your value is the only way to have control of your coins. Not your keys, not your crypto. I mean, it's a fundamental principle. And the market is screaming this right now. Coinbase saying, oh, by the way, like if we go bankrupt, you'll never see your funds again. Of course, they have a balance sheet with what, $6 billion, but they have like 100 and something billion dollars in value. So, you know, how do you compensate if you, if you, if you lose everything, if you get hyped, etc.? So don't trust anyone with your crypto, only trust yourself. I'll say those folks will also retaliate and say, well, I mean, if you hold your own crypto, you're basically a victim of your own foolishness at times. If you lose your crypto, and I think Chainalysis came up with a report last year that almost four million Bitcoins have been lost forever. So what do you say to that kind of criticism and concern? Well, you know, I prefer to take responsibility over, you know, trusting third parties. And I would say that if you walk into a decentralized world to make it centralized again, don't bother, stay in fiat. Like, you know, there is a fiat world for you that just does that. If you go decentralized, go decentralized. And also, now what you can see with NFT, with DeFi, etc., if you don't own your crypto, you cannot participate in these communities. So it is not even anymore like a philosophical discussion that we're having. Oh, am I going to trust Coinbase or Ledger or am I going to trust myself or Coinbase? It is if you want to participate in communities and if you want to use the product, you need to own your private keys. So does, does Ledger do offer anything to save people from themselves, though? If, you know, I mean, I almost lost my Ledger seed phrase, uh, and, and you know, I don't know. Like, what, what, what can you do for helpless people like me? That's okay. Like, Ledger is gonna come up. Like, we made a few announcements today. We'll make more announcements in December. In December, some of the pain points that you're talking about right now will be solved. You, we will bring this to market as well, just to make every most pain disappear. Again, we're thriving for ease of use, but we're solving a hard tech problem. The reason why uh, Coinbase, etc., all these companies were like number one for a long time in crypto is because they built weak tech to solve a hard problem. So instead of going decentralized, you go centralized and suddenly they make it easy to unramp from you know, dollar to, to Bitcoin. And don't get me wrong, they did a great job and this is what needed to be done at the time. What Ledger is doing is to solve for a very hard tech problem. We're building hardware, firmware, software, and we're building an ecosystem around it. This is a very hard problem to solve, but we're going to solve it all the way to make it always more secure and always easier to use. I saw that you also partnered with Cathay Innovation to create a $110 million crypto fund, and this was aimed at institutions. In this bear market, what is the interest from institutions right now? I mean. Technically, you would think, you know, this is the time to buy, but I, I don't know, like, you know, there's a lot of extreme fear out there. Is there interest? Is this a bad time for a crypto fund like that? With the fund will invest in companies, so Web3 companies, Seed, Series A. And for me as an investor, I've been an investor for a long time now, I prefer to invest in bear markets and bull markets. You pay a better price, it's time to build, you have to pick like creme de la creme, etc. So the game of investing, I think, is happening in bear markets and not in bull. And by the way, we're here to support communities. We're here to support businesses. And so we want to support them also when they need us the most, not when uh, they don't need us. And so right now is when the communities need us. We bring technology and we bring money. That's what we're doing. All right. On your outlook on crypto and Bitcoin and DeFi, what, what do you see this year happening? Like, how long will this bear market last? Do you still, are you still very bullish? I imagine you are. Look, so, so for, us, for, for, for us at Ledger right now, it's not a bear market. So um, I'll tell you a uh, fun fact. So uh, the bear market of 1819, we lost 90% of revenue overnight almost. It was a steep decline from like 10 million to one. This bear market, the revenue is stable. 
actually we're growing year on year. So for us, it doesn't feel like a bear market because the reason why the bear market is happening is centralized value propositions are failing and people go to decentralization and go to security. And so it's a bit of a haha moment for everyone thinking, okay, this doesn't work, let's go to Ledger. And so right now we're seeing a lot of influx from users. Every time when Coinbase released the news that, hey, we might not return your funds, we see a 5x increase in revenue day on day at Ledger. When Celsius um, is locking the funds, we see people uh, rushing to Best Buy to buy a Ledger and to, to be able to salvage that money. So actually what's happening in the market is pushing a lot of business towards Ledger. And so it's not a bear market for everyone. And you can see here, it's so vibrant. Like there are so many people, communities are engaged. So people are in the market. And this is what's very important. Retail people are in the market and institutions are still in the market. That's really interesting. So what are the lessons from the Celsius of the world? Uh, and, you know, Terra Luna falling apart and you know, other firms that are locking in funds. Don't trust anyone with your money. Uh, and uh, if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. What is also interesting is that Ledger is opening up Ledger Enterprise Create and you're going to do some security uh, treasury management. Tell me a bit about that and the demand for that. What kind of companies want to do treasury management? So Ledger Create specifically dedicated to NFT uh, on this presentation is you know, to help brands on board. Like you know brands, NFTs are an extension of brands. If you think about LVMH, Keering, etc. You know think about Louis Vuitton, like it's very natural that your Louis Vuitton bag is going to come with some form of NFT at some point, especially luxury brands that are very scarce and so having scarce NFTs to go with it. But every sort of NFT community, when brands go into the NFT world, what they put is their the reputation at risk. And so they can't do it without absolute security. And so what we're going to do with Ledger Enterprise is to help creators and brand drop NFTs with full security, which they cannot do today. Only with Ledger they can do it. And so. Uh, now they have the platform, they have the tools, and they can build on that then to drop into ledger market. It's the full cycle that we're bringing to the market, from enterprise all the way to consumer and doing everything in the middle. Awesome. Five years on out, what is the vision you see happening with crypto and Web3? You know, it's a very tough question because if you think about the web again, you know, when it was 2000, nobody saw Facebook coming. Uh, and uh, and you know, there are many things that have happened after Facebook where it's always hard to see the future. Um, the only thing I can say is when it was 2000, I knew that we were going to become digital beings. You know, and that already means everything, that everything was going to become digital, which we are today. Everything digital became an extension of everything that we do in our life. But what has happened in Web2 is as we became digital, we lost ownership. You know? And so what I know is now, users will gain ownership back of the stuff that has value for them and that's web3 and web3 only happen if there is a hardware revolution because web revolution only happen if there is a hardware revolution web1 was pc web2 was iphone web3 is ledger so in five years ledger is the only way that you access web3